Okay, good afternoon. At this time, will sergeants please start your recordings? Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Committee on Sanitation. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their video. To minimize disruption, please place electronic devices to vibrate or silent. If you wish to submit any testimony, you may do so at testimony at council.nyc.gov. Again, that's testimony at council.nyc.gov. Thank you for, for your cooperation. We are ready to begin. Councilmember Reynoso? I'm gonna. Are you ready to begin the hearing? Yes, I don't have a gavel, so I'll be using uh, some tool that I have here. Okay. Thank you for joining our virtual hearing today on street and sidewalk cleanliness in New York City. First, I would like to acknowledge my colleagues that have joined us. I see Councilmember Brennan, Councilmember Chin, Councilmember Cabrera, Councilmember Cohen that have currently joined us. Uh, thank you. I want to give a reminder that there is a significant delay about two minutes when loading the live broadcasting and when unmuting and muting for about 10 seconds. Um, so we want to just make sure that we give uh, an opportunity for panelists to speak um, with time. And uh, I think I'm going to now give this order to the moderator, uh, Nicole Abin. Nicole. Thank you. I'm Nicole Levine, committee counsel to the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management of the New York City Council. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that you will be on mute until you are called to testify, when you will be unmuted by the host. I will be calling on panelists to testify. Please listen for your name to be called. I will be periodically announcing who the next panelists will be. We will begin with testimony from the administration, followed by public testimony. The first three panelists for the public testimony portion will be Kathy Mazzari, followed by Jeffrey LaFrancois, followed by Eric Goldstein. I will call you when it is your turn to speak. During the hearing, if council members would like to ask a question, please use the Zoom raise hand function, and I will call on you in the order you've raised your hand. We will be limiting council member questions to five minutes. Thank you. Chair, if you'd like to give your opening statement. Yes. Uh, afternoon, I am Council Member Antonio Reynoso, and I'm the chair of the uh, Committee on Solid Waste and Sanitation. Uh, welcome to this hearing on street sidewalk cleanliness in New York City. As I'm sure you are all aware, the Department of Sanitation's budget was reduced dramatically in the budget for fiscal year 2021. There's about 24.5 million less in DSOI's budget to keep our streets and sidewalks clean than there was in fiscal year 2020. Alternate side parking was suspended for most of the summer and is now in effect, but with reductions. Streets are being cleaned and litter baskets are being emptied less frequently. New Yorkers are reporting overflowing litter baskets, garbage on the streets and sidewalks, and an increase in rat sightings. The Department of Sanitation needs to be funded to do the work uh, that we all rely on them to do. These cuts are making it difficult for DSNY to keep our streets and, and our sidewalks clean. There was just an announcement that some funding is being reallocated to reinstate some of the services that have been reduced. I'm interested to understand where this money came from and how it will be distributed throughout the city. Litter baskets are not only being filled with litter, but in some cases they are being filled with bags of household or business garbage. This is illegal and is adding to the garbage on our streets. We need businesses and households to dispose of garbage properly and keep litter baskets for their intended use. The cuts made to the SNY were too extreme. And we are seeing the consequences of this throughout the city. New Yorkers deserve clean streets and sidewalks. And I, as an advocate for restoring funding, I want to also ask individuals to be mindful of where they are placing their trash. Please do your part to keep our streets litter and rat free and dispose of businesses 
and residential garbage property, not in litter baskets. I look forward to hearing the SNY's testimony on how we can do a better job keeping our streets clean. I'm also interested in where the reallocated funding will be able to increase litter basket pickup. I want to be sure that this money is being distributed equitably and that there is a plan to keep all of our streets garbage free. Thank you. I will now call on members of the administration to testify. Acting Commissioner Ed Grayson, Assistant Commissioner for Policy and External Affairs, Gregory Anderson, and Chief of Cleaning, Paul Visconti. I will now deliver the oath to the administration and I will call on each of you individually to record your answers. Please speak loudly and clearly when you answer. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? Acting Commissioner Ed Grayson? I do. Acting Commissioner for Policy, or Assistant Commissioner for Policy and External Affairs, Gregory Anderson? I do. Chief of Cleaning, Paul Visconti? I do. Can you respond again? Your uh, video didn't pop up. Chief of Cleaning, Paul Visconti? I do. Can you Thank hear me? You. Yes, that was good. Um, thank you, and you may begin when you're ready. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, rather. Good afternoon, Chairman Reynoso and members of the City Council Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management. I'm Edward Grayson, an Acting Commissioner of the New York City Department of Sanitation. With me, with me here today, as we was just sworn in, is Gregory Anderson, our Assistant Commissioner for Policy and External Affairs, and Paul Visconti, Chief of Cleaning Operations. Thank you for the opportunity this afternoon to discuss sidewalk and street cleanliness in New York City. Before I begin, I would like to thank Commissioner Catherine Garcia for her six and a half years of service and leadership to the department. Under her leadership, the department has accomplished many things, creating the nation's largest curbside composting program, working with this council to pass landmark waste equity and commercial waste zone laws, implementing new state-of-the-art technologies to modernize operations and making New York City cleaner than at any time in history. And uh, for all of us here, we wish her all the best in her future endeavors. In addition, I would also like to recognize our first Deputy Commissioner, Stephen Costas, who recently announced his retirement for October 1st this year. Commissioner Costas has been steadfast in his commitment to the department for over the last 34 years, and I am thankful to him for his leadership, mentorship, and most importantly, friendship over the course of my entire career. While well, I was appointed acting commissioner less than a week ago, uh, I have for the last 21 years held a variety of, of roles in the department, uh, including the director of Bureau of Cleaning and Collection for the last three years, the operations chief uh, during the 2016 Jonas Blizzard, the largest snowstorm in city's history, and I'm proud to have dedicated my career to this department. I'm honored to have been named the acting commissioner by Mayor de Blasio, and I look forward to working with all of you to continue to keep New York City safe and clean. New York City has been the epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak in this country and on a scale of nearly unimaginable earlier this year. I'm extremely proud of the men and women of the department who work hard to deliver essential sanitation services daily in all five boroughs. Throughout this crisis, our employees have shown incredible commitment and dedication coming to work every day despite fear and anxiety, despite the terrible disease taking a devastating toll on our workforce. This global health pandemic has dramatically upended all of our lives, and the economic fallout is unprecedented. Unfortunately, the FY21 budget reflects the new reality. As with all other agencies, this department has had to make some very difficult choices and cuts to programs that are important to many New Yorkers. And unless the city re receives relief in the form of support from the federal government or a long-term borrowing authority at the state level, additional cuts loom on the horizon that could be truly devastating to our core services. The budget cuts this year include major reductions in DSNY's cleaning resources. These include a 63% reduction in litter basket collection trucks compared to last fiscal year, a reduction from 736 trucks to just 272 trucks weekly. This includes the elimination of all Sunday and holiday litter basket service, a 30% reduction in baseline funded weekday litter bas basket service, Elimination of the supplemental litter basket collection that was part of the neighborhood rodent reduction and clean NYC programs, 
as well as the non-renewal of the 8.6 million in funding for supplemental basket service added at the budget adoption of FY20. So in addition to the budget included, uh, in addition, that budget also included a 30% reduction in headcount for the lot cleaning unit, elimination of highway on and off ramp cleaning services, elimination of the dedicated syringe litter, uh, the syringe collection team. Together, these cuts have had a real impact on street and sidewalk cleanliness in New York City, as more and more New Yorkers have taken to our streets to play, dine, learn, and unwind, the amount of litter and waste has increased, particularly in parts of the outer boroughs that were hardest hit by COVID-19. As I sit before you today, I recognize this reality. Our streets and sidewalks are not as clean as you have become used to, particularly compared to the record service levels and cleanliness we've experienced over the last several years. I assure you that despite these budget cuts, we are committed to maximizing the value of these limited resources we have to improve the quality of life in our communities. This crisis has also given us an opportunity to test new approaches to street cleaning. In conjunction with the city's stay at home orders, the city suspended alternate side parking regulations for a total of 17 weeks. In large part, the city streets remained clean during the height of the pandemic, despite the suspension. In June, Mayor de Blasio announced a new pilot for alternate side parking where most residential streets would be swept only once per week to alleviate the impact of ASP on New York City drivers. While many neighborhoods already had once per week sweeping, particularly in the less, less dense neighborhoods, in other areas, streets had been swept twice or three times per week. We continue to evaluate this pilot with a goal of balancing street cleanliness and convenience. Sweeping schedules in metered areas though have not changed. There is good news. Last week, the mayor announced several initiatives focused on improving cleanliness and reducing litter in our neighborhoods. This announcement included a partial restoration of litter basket service, restoring 65 litter basket trucks per week with a focus on the neighborhoods hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as a few other areas across the city that will see increase, increased pedestrian traffic as employees return to the workforce. Through the Economic Development Corporation Clean NYC initiative, the city will provide funding to the DOE Fund to provide supplemental cleaning services in neighborhoods and parks across the city through the end of the calendar year. This supplemental cleaning will support the efforts by DSNY and the Department of Parks and Recreation, as well as business improvement districts and other community partners. The DOE Fund provides employment, career and training and social services to homeless and formerly incarcerated individuals. Lastly, the city will expand efforts to partner with community-based organizations, elected officials and the private sector to sponsor community cleanups and mobilize volunteers to collect litter on streets and parks. The city will provide tools and logistics support to those groups who host cleanups. We have also received nearly 1.9 million in funds from the New York City Council members through NYC Cleanup Initiative. These funds will enable DSNY to restore additional services and, su and supplement our budgeted services. Now more than ever, we rely on the cooperation and support of our fellow New Yorkers to help us keep New York City clean. We need all New Yorkers to do their part. Don't litter, use the baskets properly and clean up after yourselves and your pets. But even more, we encourage residents, community organizations, business owners, and others to help clean our city. Already, dozens of local and state elected officials have hosted community cleanup events in our parks, plazas, and neighborhoods. We encourage groups of volunteers to do the same, and we'll provide tools and resources to any groups interested in doing such. I thank the council for their past, present, and future support as the department continues to provide essential services during this unprecedented crisis. And now my team and I will be happy to respond to any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. We're gonna be hearing some feedback from my son in the background um, often, I guess, at this point. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I wanna just uh, thank you, Commissioner, for your words. Your kind words are related to Commissioner Kathy Garcia. This is the first hearing that we're gonna have without her. Um, and it is, it, it's, a, it's a sad day. Um, she's been absolutely amazing. Uh, working together with her, we've been able to accomplish a lot, but I am looking forward to, to your tenure as well. Um, we also have been working together and have a relationship and I know um, how much you care about the city and how much you care about the, the Department of Sanitation. Um, I, I, a lot of people don't know your background, but I know that uh, garbage has been in your life for a long time, Commissioner. Uh, <laughs> Um, so if you could just speak, I would actually like to take some time 
if you could just speak to a little bit of that background and your history um, so the folks in this committee that are meeting you for the first time could get to know you. Oh, uh, my pleasure. So uh, I am the son of a retired sanitation worker uh, and my mother also worked for the department many years ago when they started the recycling program. She was one of the first outreach coordinators who tried to get the people uh, of this city to get on board back in the late eighties. Um, my father worked uh, the truck uh, and he retired as a supervisor out in Brooklyn North. And uh, after both of them had long been passed from their, uh, their prime here, uh, I joined the department through the regular civil service channels. And I started my career uh, in Queens Community Board 3, the garage there. Um, I remember quite well doing the basket truck every midnight up uh, Roosevelt Avenue and throughout East Elmhurst and uh, Jackson Heights. Additionally, uh, I have a little bit of synergy also with the chair because I grew up in Ridgewood. Um, and I went my, uh, where I went to junior high is right in his district. So uh, uh, I'm very familiar with, with the day-to-day. -day. Um, I love the department. I've been doing this for over two decades and uh, I am not agnostic to what everybody's seeing out there. And my team here, particularly Chief Visconti, uh, dedicate ourselves every single day to cleaning the city. And uh, we're, we're, we're glad to have this hearing and try to bring some cap clarity into what's going on because we're, we're, we're all in this together. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Commissioner. So um, my first question is uh, going to be about the cuts that were made so that uh, the city understands or the folks that are watching um, understand exactly what was cut. And it's a uh, 24.5 million that was uh, directly reduced services that keep our streets and sidewalks clean. And I want to go through them and you, if you could just let me know um, what these mean in real terms, because folks are seeing them, we're seeing them as cuts. But what does it mean on a day-to-day -day operation? I'll give one example is uh, the basket service in rat mitigation zones. There was 718,000 cut. Uh, so what, what, it, what does that mean uh, in, I guess, uh, in operations? Well, what is that reduction looking? It looks like, what does it look like? So in conjunction with uh, the initiative to add additional service, both uh, refuse removal and litter basket service trucks, uh, in the area's hardest hit with uh, the mayor's rat road mitigation program, um, we were running additional service to try to eliminate food source and keep the place extra clean. Um, that funding is gone. So those trucks no longer run. Now those yeah, areas yeah. still get regular service, uh, just the additional service that was added for that specific goal was reduced in this budget. And these rat mitigation zones were in and around like NYCHA developments um, and those areas like I remember uh, the rat mitigation shows prioritizing um, nitro developments. Um, is is are you familiar with that or? or yes, no. Have... So so we'll get it. We and I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll let uh, Commissioner Anderson speak uh, a little bit on some some additional nuancey stuff with that. But primarily, those additional services were in uh, Manhattan uh, and up in the Bronx. Um, and yes, they're around the areas most impacted where the uh, the reports of rat burrows because the Department of Health initiative, like they, they monitor that um, and they, they, they receive those health complaints. So working in conjunction with that team, the places that had the highest amount, uh, and there are a few nuancy things that I will let uh, Assistant Commissioner Anderson uh, weigh in on as well. Assistant Commissioner. Uh, he's muted. Yeah, there's gonna be a slight delay. There we go, okay. Um, so as the commissioner mentioned, um, we had the, the neighborhood rat reduction uh, initiative, which the mayor announced back in 2017. The Department of Sanitation has been a, a very um, close partner with the Department of Health, the Department of Parks, um, schools, et cetera, also NYCHA, as you mentioned, Chair. Um, and that was focused in three rat mitigation zones, um, one in Lower East Side uh, and Chinatown and East Village in Manhattan, one in the Bronx along the Grand Concourse and one in Brooklyn, uh, Bushwick and Bedside. And so those, uh, those zones were receiving um, supplemental litter basket collection service. Some of them had extra um, household collection service as well as intensive uh, efforts by the health department and others to um, inspect for rat activity, uh, perform um, rat elimination activities as necessary, um, and really just try to cut down on, on the food and, and housing that the rats need to survive. And that, that funding was, the $718,000 cut, was that the entire program? 
was cut or a part of the program? So the, the sanitation portions of that program were uh, reduced. So the supplemental litter basket service, the supplemental uh, refuse collection service were both eliminated. The health department portion of the program, which has the intensive uh, inspection is still ongoing. Um, we still have our, our monthly task force meetings with the health department and others where we really dive into the data. Um, unfortunately, we just don't have the supplemental collection. So as the commissioner mentioned, we're still providing service in those neighborhoods, still keeping a very close eye on them, uh, just have lower service levels than we did previously. And then we have a fourth day of collection service in rat mitigation zone. So when combined, it's more uh, closer to 2.2 million in cuts related to rat mitigation zones. Uh, the fourth day of collection service is that just like uh, uh, just picking up one extra day of basket pickup uh, in, in these areas? That's exactly that. Yeah. Okay. Um, then we have weekday, Sunday, and holiday service. Um, and I have the, here it says enforcement. And that's almost $10 million, $9.45 million. What exactly, um, what, what are the effects of that cut? I have a weekday, Sunday, and holiday service. Oh, yes. So in essence, let me just make my show my own. It's okay. So in essence, we have, uh, we have, we have reduced our baseline week, weekday and holiday services uh, on basket trucks. So we were running a baseline level of service as well as Sunday and holiday service to make sure that there were not, there wasn't a single day that, you know, we didn't get out there to the main commercial hubs. And now we are not running. We took a baseline hit. Uh, on the day, the six day a week trucks, the Monday through Saturday regular operation, and then the supplemental Sunday and holiday cleaning trucks that would go out every Sunday, every holiday, they were also eliminated. The highway ramp cleaning. Um, so we're getting some complaints. I'll, I'll just speak to North Brooklyn. Uh, underneath the BQE, for example, um, would this, would um, highway ramp cleaning uh, affect that in any way, shape, or form? Um, and if not, what exactly are we talking about when we, we see the highway ramp cleaning being cut by $864,000? So we were working, so highway ramps are predominantly a DOT thing, and we're not doing it past the buck here. We were supplementing the regular highway ramp sweeping schedule that DOT has. Uh, by going up, we worked with them, we built uh, routes, uh, Chief Visconti's team, they built specific dedicated broom routes to not get the big bulky debris that could sometimes be on the main bed of the highway, but the litter that builds up on the on and off ramps that, you know, frequently get trapped and become an eyesore. So we had a routine schedule that we were working with them to uh, supplement their efforts to keep the highway clean. And uh, that's what that is. So it wasn't so much stuff underneath the ramps. It, this was more uh, the ramp shoulders to make sure that that litter that accumulates the wind blown litter and stuff. Uh, and also we would be out there with our crews and we would also take some of the bulk that was along that route in one of our lead vehicles when we were up there, but it was a supplement to what DOT was doing. And then the, the next two, I think are the, the ones that people are seeing or are feeling the most, which is lot cleaning. Um, can you just explain the timeline and exactly how long, how much longer it takes because of the almost $2 million cuts to it's a lot cleaning. We're seeing a lot of uh, illegal dumping now in these lots and uh, uh, a long time or, or a long time for a response from the Department of Sanitation. Can we just, can you just go into what that 1.9 million does um, or how it affects uh, the lot cleaning? I'm going to absolutely uh, let Chief Visconti weigh in. Uh, they work directly for him, that team. That's one of the legs of his unit. But before I turn the, the mic over, I just want to say that, yes, lot cleaning, in addition to cleaning the vacant lots, uh, both private and city owned. It's a very administrative heavy process in order to get sometimes permission uh, and writs and consent orders because some of it is especially on private property. They are also our go-to unit for the specialty cleanings that pop up that can't be mitigated by the day-to-day -day district personnel because all the men and women assigned there have specialized training. They know how to use specific pieces of equipment to do uh, bulk debris removal in uh, hard to reach places, so to speak. So the reduction of those resources is definitely a hit. And most recently, uh, our biggest asset in the storm response to the ICAS event where the trees, where we're on the tree debris task force, uh, we were using lot cleaning to do all that. Those, like I said, those men and women uh, have specialized training. So we took a 30% reduction in that, which definitely leads to service delays. But I'll let Chief Visconti weigh in with some more granular info. Go ahead, Chief. 
Okay. Can you folks hear me? Yes. <clears throat> Good afternoon. So like the commissioner said, yes, we took a reduction in lock cleaning to the tune of uh, about a third of the workers there. It's a citywide unit, so no particular borough got affected more than another. Um, it's a citywide unit. It just happened recently, within the last couple of weeks. So we don't have, I don't have, I can't, to the answer to your question as far as how much longer is it taking, I don't have that because it's pretty new. However, there's a lot of obstacles that go into it uh, as far as a, a dirty lot. Um, when someone sees a dirty lot, naturally the first glance is not, uh, you know, all the nuances that go into it. Like, is it private? Is it city? City lots we could get to re relatively quickly. I mean, immediately. Private lots is a different story. As some of you may or may not know. Um, it depends on whether it's uh, fenced and locked, uh, whether it's accessible or not accessible. Um, we, we do a um, ownership search. We petition the owner. Actually, we petition the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to notify the owner that there's a condition on his or her lot. And we give a prescribed time frame of a couple of weeks for them to correct that if they do not correct it. Uh, we do a follow-up if they do not correct it and the lot's successful, we move in to clean the lot. So that whole process takes a couple of weeks. That's no, you know, pre-cuts. It has nothing to do with the cuts. That's a couple of a week process right there. If we go back to that private lot and it's inaccessible, we can't just go into that lot. If we, if it's no access, now we have to petition a judge to let us get into that lot. And that is not something easy that's quickly or easily done. It's it's like asking someone to go into your home, basically, when they grant that kind of access warrant. So for that, that could take months. And we have to show egregious conditions, rat droppings, if we're in West Nile virus time of year, so on and so forth. So even without the cuts, some of these lots take a long, long time to get to. Uh, and through no fault or of our own, it's just um, through legalities. But we're yeah, still just, out there doing it. I mean, for fiscal year 21, um, uh, we've already cleaned uh, north, uh, north of 270 lots and another 100 um, non-lot cleanings. Those are the ones you're talking, you mentioned briefly about underneath the uh, highway. Uh, anything that's not a lot, that's kind of heavy duty, uncut streets, Leventhal areas, things of that nature, um, brush that's growing. Uh, we, we addressed those, so we addressed 100 so far just this fiscal year alone. Thank you, Chief. Um, I want to. I'm gonna. I have a lot, a lot of questions that I want to ask, but I want to allow for my colleagues to get some time, so um, because I can stay on after. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a pause on my questions, uh, but I do want to say uh, to DSNY, uh, I am deeply grateful for the work that you guys are doing every single day. You're asking to do just as much with less um, and, I, and I, I just don't see how that math adds up. So I understand that things are gonna get more difficult, but um, I think uh, later on, I'll be asking about this uh, increase in funding by the mayor for basket pickup and how that affects the work that we're doing and whether or not um, it'll, it'll start dealing with uh, the more apparent garbage um, that we're seeing every single day. But again, I wanna allow for my colleagues to ask some questions. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it over uh, to Nicole again. Thank you. Um, I will now call in council members in the order they have used the Zoom raise hand function. Council members, please keep your questions to five minutes. The sergeant in arms will keep a timer and, I will, and they will let you know when your time is up. So first we'll hear from council member Cohen, followed by council member Brannon, followed by council member Chin. Time, starts, time starts now. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. It's good to see you. It's good to see my colleagues. Uh, I wanna Congratulate the acting commissioner, uh, congratulations. Uh, uh, I also want to acknowledge, uh, I was a big fan of Commissioner Garcia as well. Um, uh, and I also want to say that, uh, you know, this budget was obviously the most difficult budget uh, I, we've had to tackle in our in my time in office. And I would tell you, if I, I don't think I fully understood the impact or the scope of the cuts on sanitation. I think it really would have given me pause because I, I don't think that the mission of DSNY is tenable uh, with the funds that we've provided. And, and the thing that makes me believe that is in my entire time in office, up until you know, this, the last few months, I literally almost never got complaints about DSNY. Like 
people's trash got picked up. The, the city baskets got picked up. The, uh, you know, people complain sometimes that they got tickets for alternate side, but they didn't complain that you didn't come. Um, and it was really one agency that just did not require a lot of attention from my office. Uh, and that has not been the case in the last few months. So, uh, and I think it's obviously uh, directly correlated to the budget cuts. Um, my, my, my first question, I, it maybe is a, I don't know, this is, but alternate side. In community board eight, um, where they basically had one side, alternate side on one day of the week on each street, they got no cut in alternate side park. In CB7, which is, you know, has a greater density, uh, has been determined based on past studies that it needs more uh, alternate side, they got a 50% cut. So I don't understand how that makes any sense. Um, I, I think it's unfair and it's just led to, you know, significantly dirtier streets in CB7. So I'm I'm concerned about that, and I, I, you know, I just think that that's just uh, from a, a management perspective of planning and an asset allocation. I just don't think that that's equitable or fair, uh, and it, it really puts a burden on the people in CB7. You know, highway ramps. I have you know the Major Deegan, the Henry Hudson Parkway, and the Bronx River, and I have multiple exits. And uh, you know, I use the Major Deegan ramp a lot, and it's it's filthy. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk about. Um, uh, staffing levels based on the cuts. Are we cutting when we cut service? What's happening to the the people who used to do those services? And I do have one more question uh, about Sunday service. Uh, I give discretionary money. It's not a huge amount. It's about fifty thousand dollars for Sunday service. I, what, what what's going to happen with that money? So those are really the two. Well, thank you for your question and and your support. And yes, um, we truly appreciate. Uh, your support uh, to put out additional fund to provide additional funding for service. Um, so, what happened to the people was we we in our budget we had planned uh, attrition to get to lower heads. So for right now, uh, despite the threat of other you know personnel actions that we've all read about with the budget and potentials, um, the Department of Sanitation has not had to lay anybody off. Um, however, we had an attrition plan to get down to a specific headcount because of these service cuts. The, the, the sad reality is a lot of the cleaning that was being done um, because it wasn't baselined and because it wasn't six day a week was sometimes based upon a, a formulaic overtime model. So when we cut the funding, we didn't lose the heads immediately, but we, cut, we lost the service because we're not running the overtime trucks or we're not adding on Saturday uh, mechanical brooms that we normally wouldn't run for the highway. So that's why it, it, right now it's not a complete, where you cut where the people, right now we're, on, we're, we're planned on entering uh, this coming winter with a lower headcount amount, just because of the attrition plan, agnostic of anything else that comes down the pipe. Um, so that's to, the, to where we are on the heads. Um, and as far as what's going to happen as we uh, get any uh, additional resources from council members or any other funding source, we're going to work with those providers to find out where the best use is. And to that end, I will uh, let Chief Escanti weigh in. He, he's part, his team and his whole staff is part of the team that works with all of the members of the council and various other units to make sure that we're getting the right message across, especially when you're committing your funds and where you need it. But, but we don't have the capacity to do Sunday basket pickup at this point in time? Um, it's, it, it depends. There is, and I'll let the chief weigh in. It That's really nice. is a, it's kind of a, it's, it's a, it's, it's, you, there's a, you can, but you, there's, there's caveats. That's okay. All. Chief, I, I get, I, Johnson Avenue and, and on 235th street, I, I mean, every Monday morning, my email, my email basket is filled with photos of that. Candy Time expired. We're waiting for Chief to be uh, unmuted. Yes, thank you. I was waiting to be unmuted. Uh, Council Member Colm, first of all, thank you for your continued partnership. Uh, you know, I know you, you like that Sunday basket truck each year. You service each and every year. We've been waiting for your email, by the way. We're ready to go with that uh, Sunday service. Um, yes, so the, the city cleaning initiative money is separate from the cuts. And uh, by all means, if you want that Sunday service and you want to contribute again this year to us, uh, reach out to community affairs like you normally do through channels and speak to Nick or Henry, whoever you want to deal with. Then okay. by all means, we'll get that uh, we'll get that route going as soon as you would like. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. 
Okay. Do you have any anything else, customer coin that maybe last minute you would have want to ask? You lost some I time I there. I covered all of the things that I real that I all my notes. So. Okay. Thank you, customer. I appreciate it. Thank you. Next one. We'll very quick, sorry, Nicole. I just want to acknowledge the fact that we've been joined by uh, Council Member Costa Constantinidis. Uh, it's really, really good to see you, Costa. Um, nice of you to be on. Um, thank you. Go ahead, Nicole. Now we'll hear from Council Member Brannon, followed by Council Member Chin. Council Member Brannon. Time starts now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Um, Acting Commissioner, welcome aboard. Um, it's great to meet you. I've heard only great things about you from uh, a lot of folks I grew up with who are on the job right now. So um, that, that uh, people, people are texting me right now telling me how great you are. So um, a lot of guys I went to high school with are, uh, are on the job. So that, that means a lot to me. Um, and certainly we miss, we miss Kathy, but I think you'll do a great job. Um, yeah, I mean, as some of my colleagues have mentioned, um, I don't think you needed to be an, an oracle uh, to know that the budget cuts to sanitation were going to be felt and seen um, immediately, and they sure were. Um, because of budget constraints, um, you know, I had to take most of the most of the funds that discretionary, the the sort of extra discretionary funding we, that we get that I would normally give to. Um, a doe fund or wildcat to do sort of detailing, we had to take that money to, and give it back to sanitation just to sort of get the baseline of what we used to have uh, back in the Gilded Age before before COVID. Um, what are, I guess, I'd, I'd like to know, I mean, I think I know sort of anecdotally what the, the challenges are uh, with budget cuts, but certainly um, with, with the MLP, um, that we had, which is important for illegal dumping and that kind of stuff. Um, what are some of the immediate challenges that, that you're seeing uh, with the budget cuts in addition to, you know, the overflowing corner garbage cans? Are there other areas that we're not uh, thinking about that, that, that we're seeing an impact on? Um, absolutely. And, and thank you for your support. Um, you're, you're always a good partner to us. And uh, I know how much you care about the city and the cleanliness particularly. Um, and yes, it's not just the litter baskets uh, where we've seen it. We're out there every day and we would love to do more. Um, in addition to litter basket uh, reductions, we had also a reduction. We had a, a, a solid partnership with uh, the JTP program where we were getting uh, manual street cleaners out there every week. And because of the COVID crisis, uh, that's suspended for a while. I won't say it's gone forever, but that's a noticeable impact. Um, not having those manual resources to get into some of the fence lines and some of the uh, drop off and dump out areas. Um, additionally, you know, sadly, it's, it, it is also true that we are seeing uh, an uptick in illegal dumping. Um, the exact root cause of that, I mean, in fairness, the root cause of any illegal dumping, depending on what it is, uh, is, uh, is an interesting myriad. It's a, uh, I, there's no right answer to why someone would put half a load of concrete on, a, a, on an abandoned street or something. So, but we have seen an uptick of that. That's been a challenge for us. We're using our enforcement personnel to try to stake out those high uh, event areas and, and we're doing the best we can with that, but that's a challenge to keep on top of and keep clean. And, you know, just circling back to the, the, the corner litter baskets, um, the other side of it too, is that some of it is uh, also COVID related, meaning we're imploring everyone to use the frequency service. So. The, the department comes either two or three times a week for you for regular pickup for your household refuse, depending on what neighborhood you live in. Um, however, we're also cognizant that sadly, some of the people who live in the apartments or houses, maybe because of COVID fears, they're getting rid of material. They don't want to hold it an extra day. You know, you never know how people are reacting to, you know, uh, just getting rid of waste or what have you in the world. So we've seen some anecdotally there, I can't scientifically prove it, but we've seen some behavior change and uh, in some cases, because of the people, more and more people telecommuting or being at home or the stay at home order, we have certain areas of the city where tonnage was up on our residential household collection. So maybe there was an increase at the curb, which then coupled with our outage. So in the beginning, and that's the other thing, you know, you think of the way the optics of cleanliness, it's a cumulative effect. So whether or not it's directly clean or directly dirty, it's just if you have this you know, it's that reticulating accurate, you know, in your sensor that in your brain where you can see something every day and then you're looking for it. 
And that's not to say that it's not dirty. It is. It's dirtier. The streets are dirtier. But the truth of the matter is we've come through this long six-month process where we had no mechanical booms running. We had uh, some in some days service collect. Uh, the collection service was delayed because of staff outage or just us not being able to man it. At some point during the height of the pandemic, the department had a 20% outage factor on the field effective workforce. And these men and women came in every day with fear. You know, they, they braved it through. Uh, they're real heroes throughout this. And one day when they, when, when hopefully when we're all in a much better place on COVID and we can look back and highlight all the, the various people who did just some amazing- I'm expired. Going, sanitation will be in there. But those are some of the challenges, Councilman. We, we're, it's not just the litter baskets. We're having challenges in just about every front. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, my, my time is up. We, we just had a, um, we had an electronic waste recycling event last weekend and um, the turnout was insane. And I mean, I think that's a testament to how much people appreciated when we were able to do that through DSNY. Certainly something I hope eventually we can bring back and also getting a lot of folks who are reaching out about the um, the hazardous waste removal sites, I guess, that, that have been, they're still closed apparently. So, yes. um, you know, doing what we can to, to get by and to make sure folks are obviously keeping your workers safe, not throwing stuff out that they're not allowed to throw out, but appreciate the the, um, the work you guys are doing. And a safe neighborhood is, is the foundation, a safe and clean neighborhood is the foundation for everything else. So nothing but respect for you guys. And um, I look forward to working with you. Same here. Thank you. Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Brennan. And I just want to follow up with a couple of things is, um, are we are we looking to uh, to maintain ASP or the alternate side parking as is? Um, and for how long is there has there been a discussion uh, to bring it back to what it was originally? I just want to know what the internal discussions regarding alternate side of street parking is um, in 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 the administration. Oh, absolutely. Um, so we are currently working. So everybody knows what we're working through a pilot right now where we're only coming on the last posted sign. So as stated earlier, um, one time a week areas were still getting the one time a week that they normally had. Uh, and in, in areas that, that had ASP for multiple days, it's the last posted day on the sign. Um, this is to alleviate the, the need to leave the house to give some relief on both convenience uh, and just public safety. And we really are reevaluating with the administration um, the best way to do street cleaning in the modern city. Uh, and that doesn't mean, and there are certain areas of the city where the, the sweeping schedule was perhaps insufficient. We had, we get requests all the time for more sweeping and we have other areas of the city that are saying, you know, our area is relatively clean. Maybe we could do something that provides more opportunity to park or more opportunity to do trade, more opportunity to do business. And maybe we need less sweeping uh, at that point you know, taking into all of that and then on the on the back end of the COVID pandemic and, and its impact on trying to open back up, keep residents uh, safe and, and healthy, we're into this new pilot program. We are working towards something that is uh, with with all stakeholders and, and nothing's coming out yet, but we are, our intent is to keep working towards that. Uh, someone who's been involved at some of the policy level at, at City Hall and with other stakeholders is our Assistant Commissioner, Greg Anderson. I'm gonna let him weigh in on any of the nuancy stuff we are continuing working and what you're seeing now is not where we will be it's just the current program yeah and and i would echo what uh commissioner grayson said um we're continuing to evaluate the pilot um i think it's we, what we saw during the height of covid was that um you know the streets actually stayed really clean um when people were staying in their homes um, as people, you know, came out, started to using this, using the streets more, using public space more, um, using outdoor dining. Um, hopefully, starting next week, um, learning. Um, you know, I think we've seen more litter, and and we want to find the right balance of how frequently we have to clean the streets um, and how frequently people have to, you know, go through the inconvenience of moving their car. Um, you know, it's it's something that I think we're we're going to have to keep working through over the next few months. Um, but right now. The uh, once a week uh, pilot is extended indefinitely. We're continuing to evaluate it. I think we wanna see what happens in the winter um, and how that changes things. Um, but we're looking at other factors as well um, to try to, to really think through what are other cities doing, um, look to best practices for how can we 
get that curb access um, and really clean the streets, but also um, do so in a way that, you know, doesn't make someone double park their car for 90 minutes or sit in their car for 90 minutes or, you know, circle the block 10 times trying to find a parking space on Monday night. So that's, that's what we're trying to achieve. Okay. I just um, want to just let you know that I've never seen so many people ask for more cleaning or the, to bring back ASP the way it was originally than, the, than before. So um, I'm, I'm surprised that folks are advocating for that. And I do want to say, because it's happening once a week in, in some areas like in Williamsburg, um, I just want to make sure you guys, it, the enforcement needs to be stronger. Um, many cars are staying on, uh, staying parked. And if an area doesn't get cleaned, we have to wait a whole, uh, one more week before it gets cleaned again. And just the timeline there, the amount of dirt that piles up in two weeks worth of trash without a cleaning, I think is a, is a big problem. So I just want to make sure that you, you know that enforcement should be happening very aggressively, more aggressive than ever, because it's only one day we're asking this time and we need people to like, we need people to uh, help us um, help the city. Um, and they're not doing that right now. So just uh, advocate for more enforcement on that one day, Commissioner. Um, okay, uh, Nicole, sorry. Thank you. Thanks. Um, next, we'll hear from Council Member Chin. Time starts now. Thank you, Chair, and uh, welcome, Commissioner. Looking forward to working with you. Um, I have a couple of uh, questions um, regarding, like, the one of the rat mitigation zone um, is in my district in Chinatown and Lower East Side, and it was doing quite well. Um, you know, I think um, Assistant Commissioner. Anderson, you know, work with us and we work with the Department of Health. And one of the, the good thing about it was that we got a lot of uh, big belly uh, trash can uh, in the community. And I think that really um, was a significant improvement, even though we had some sabotage going on in the beginning where people were doing illegal dumping, uh, stuffing, you know, with bricks and all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, so one of the questions is, uh, um, that I wanted to ask was, what about looking at some of the problematic area in, in terms of having, uh, you know, Big Belly at the street corner and seeing if there's a way to do a partnership with local merchants? I mean, fortunately, in my district, I have quite a number of business improvement districts. So they're responsible with bagging the garbage and, and putting on the on the side. And with the budget cut, I mean, those garbage bags do pile up. Um, so that's one question. The other question is, maybe Assistant Commissioner uh, can answer. The whole plastic bag, you know, um, ban that we pushed uh, and all the education effort. So I wanted to see if there was like any data on reduction uh, of the plastic bag waste, uh, the sanitation department C because there was so much effort that went in it. And I'm, I remember in my office, we're still giving out uh, those orange recyclable bag and people really like it a lot. And my last question is that because of the pandemic, so many people are working from home and I see the whole, all these, you know, delivery, all these boxes on Amazon and whatever. And so my question is around the recycling program. Like, the, I mean, how do we make sure that these apartment buildings and, you know, that they got to like compact those boxes? Because I still see when I walk down the street, <laughs> people don't fill up those boxes. It just creates so much more uh, recyclable garbage. So if there's ways that we can work together to mandate that they got to do their part uh, because that definitely um, have increased because more people are staying at home. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, yes, I look forward to working with you and I'll just take your points uh, as quickly as I can. I will defer uh, for the latest on the bag uh, legislation and where that's headed uh, to Commissioner Anderson in one second. As to the big bellies, so we are always, we just recently last year, we the department undertook the Better Bin campaign and we're always on in search for the right litter basket, always. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a thing we're gonna do and we're always looking literally for the best possible way. Um, big bellies in, interestingly enough, just, just a, 
uh, thing to think of. There's certainly, uh, a, they have more volume when used correctly because they have a compaction in there. Um, interesting thing post COVID for the limited number of big bellies. And again, I don't have scientific background. I don't have a, a real survey I can empirical I could share, but anecdotally, a lot less people are using them because you have to touch it. So the challenge with something that you have to pull on the handle uh, is that becomes a challenge to implement, um, especially now. So moving forward in time, and that's why a lot of times you, I think everybody has seen some, sadly, some of those cases of the big bellies where uh, people are using it almost like a snack table. Uh, and there's, the, the, there's plenty of capacity left in that basket and yet they're stacking things on top of the, the, the broad top. Um, so that's an optics thing. However, I'm definitely willing to work together to try to find the right solution in a post-COVID world. And again, I'm not blaming the handle. It's just that, that just, that's a game changer because big bellies are great. Well, a lot of them, you could just videos. use your foot. There are one that you well, could yeah, use well, they have the foot panel one. Yeah. It depends on the model. The, the mayor demonstrated have, the like food. A, Oh no, no, but the, they also they, they also have a maintenance thing with them with regard to the fact that sadly they become uh, uh, an attraction for graffiti and other things that then have a another component. They're not they're not bad. They're not good. But I would definitely work with you and talk to you and we could discuss the best ways to move forward with something like that uh, in hopefully more uh, economically favorable times. Um, to the recycling, uh, yeah, I think that we can time expired. Um, outreach. Because I do think that people's behavior did change on how they buy. Amazon was on an upswing anyway, but clearly in the, in the wake of the pandemic, a lot more people bringing in boxes to home. So maybe just education, uh, coupled with some enforcement where it's completely egregious, but education to say, hey, there is a proper way to bundle this so that it's not all over the sidewalk. And this is your recycling day. So I would gladly work on that. And uh, Commissioner Anderson can weigh in on where we are right now with plastic bags and, and moving forward on that. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Um, so, you know, I, and, and we've worked together for um, probably six or more years, uh, council member, on, <laughs> on fighting plastic bag waste. So I appreciate your um, longstanding advocacy there. Um, unfortunately, um, the state got sued uh, back in March. Um, not surprising, the plastics industry is uh, very litigious and they love suing us for every great thing we try to do. Um, that lawsuit actually just got resolved uh, a little bit over a month ago. And breaking news as of a few days ago, DEC actually announced that they're starting enforcement on October 19th. Um, so we don't technically yet live in a world where plastic bags are banned, but uh, less than a month from now, we can finally celebrate uh, living in a, a plastic bag free New York City. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're talking to DEC about how to amplify their enforcement efforts. Um, I think we definitely want to try to do as much outreach as we can, understanding the limited uh, resources available to us um, to do that outreach. Um, I think we're really optimistic that uh, stores that are giving out paper bags will um, be charging the paper bag fee, which can help to support some of our reusable bag distributions um, and really you know, try to get as many reusable bags into the hands of New Yorkers. Because if you take your reusable bag to the grocery store, you don't have to pay the fee. It's uh, totally free to use um, and much better for the environment. So that's where we are there. And I wanna actually um, uh, build off of what the commissioner said on the recycling piece. Um, interestingly enough, even though you know, it seems like everyone is ordering from Amazon everything, um, the paper recycling actually hasn't increased that substantially uh, over, the, over the past six months. It's been a, an increase of on average around three or 4% on a month by month basis. Um, the metal, glass, and plastic recycling is skyrocketing now, um, around a 25% increase for most months since the beginning of COVID, um, which is really fascinating. Uh, I, I think we can all sort of guess why that might be, um, but uh, you know we're we're keeping an eye on the recycling, um, really trying to ensure that New Yorkers are still recycling, especially now that they're spending more time at home. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Council Member Constantinides. Time starts now. Okay, so uh, Commissioner, uh, great to see you. Uh, congratulations. Assistant Commissioner Anderson, good to see you as well. Thank you, Chair, for the warm introduction. I'm glad to be here with everyone here today. Um, 
So just very quickly, because I have to, to run to another meeting. Uh, number one, uh, I gave $10,000 through cleanup initiative money for additional litter basket pickups. Are those happening? Will they be happening? Uh, I want to ensure that our business corridors that I've funded, because last night I got sent a video with rats scurrying uh, around garbage uh, in those same corridors, which was a little concerning. Um, so I want to make sure that that money is going to be put to good use. And then secondly, what is the impact of the alternate side of the street reduction on our waterways? Um, how much more uh, debris is getting sent into our sewer system than causing uh, you know, CSO debris uh, in our waterways? Have, have we seen an uptick there? Um, and I know the DP is not on the call, but you know, I know DSNY, you guys do the street cleaning. Uh, so sort of want to know the answer to that question as well. Thank you for your question, uh, Councilman. It's a, we appreciate your partnership and we know your dedication to cleaning in your community. It's been uh, uh, in your council. And uh, yes, so uh, sadly, only anecdotally, I could tell you we don't have a, a tonnage report or a, a contamination report from DEP, but we could all see that if we, if we have more and more things that could be considered floatables or litter that get into the catch basin prior to being swept up that we would have normally gotten to prior to that happening, Clearly, there's more than likely some more getting in. Whether or not that's making it its way uh, past any treatment center, I, I don't know. But we can certainly follow up. And it's a very good point, and we're not agnostic to it. And as far as uh, your support and how that 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 goes in, I'm going to let Chief Paul Viscotti uh, talk to, uh, directly to that. Go ahead, Chief. Good afternoon, uh, Council Member, and thank you for your contribution. Can you hear me? Okay, um, yes, your, the answer to your question is yes. You're, um, you funded, I believe, a, um, a basket truck, a partial basket truck on Saturdays that went into effect uh, September 5th. So it's been a couple of uh, Saturdays now. If you are not seeing the result of that, um, we, we can sidebar on that, my office or yourself and with me, and I'll take a look at the route and tweak it, or you know, we could discuss exactly what you have in mind and your area of focus, and I'll, I'll make sure you get the service that you're, you're supposed to be getting. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you, Councilmember Constantinides. I just want to recognize that we've been joined by Councilmember Chaim Deutsch as well. Uh, Councilmember Deutsch, if you want, um, you can ask questions now. Time starts now. I don't think he's taking, I don't think he's going to ask any questions. So I'm going to follow up with some questions um, before we uh, turn it over to uh, uh, the folks that are testifying today. Um, <clears throat> the mayor announced uh, an initiative to restore a portion of the 20 FY21 sanitation services citywide. Can you walk us through how this will be funded? Um, you know, how we found the money uh, and uh, what the, the details are where is it happening? Where exactly are we sending this this extra service? You talked about equity, not equality, which I, I love to hear. Um, so want to know what what that means. And then, uh, is this a uh, overtime or additional uniform sanitation headcount increase? I just want to understand the parameters of the entire of the entire increase. Uh, understood, and thank you for your question. Uh, and yes, so no, this is not a head. Currently, this is not a headcount increase. Uh, we are still on our planned uh, attrition plan um, as far as uh, the areas that are impacted. So 27 specific areas were identified as being hardest hit. Um, and we tried to tailor the routes to address those with COVID that is hardest hit COVID. Uh, and, and coupled with our institutional knowledge of where the overflowing baskets have been and the field observations that come in, so working together with the administration, we, we, we devised 65 additional basket trucks per week uh, and we can certainly give you uh, all the breakdown of what it, where exactly those areas are. It's not a problem. Um, it is not a headcount program. It is an overtime program. Um, and as far as where we, how we're funding it, we are working with OMB and we're moving around existing resources that the agency has to try to get that done. Um, and, and that's how, and we got it off the ground. So the key for us is uh, noticeable this, we, we ran our first series of those trucks starting this week. And uh, in the areas that saw them, 
clearly, like anything, uh, an empty basket is a good basket. So that worked out. And we're, we're still yet to see for the rest of that initiative with regard to the partnerships with the Doe Fund or community cleanups or bid, uh, that is still being worked out. It's a, the, the announcement's like a week old. So we're gonna have to see how that cascades, what that actually means into real time. But it seems to be promising. Anytime we could solicit additional help uh, to, to help us maintain our core job, keeping the streets clean, for anybody you want, for the Doe Fund folks who come in and do a great job and the business, business improvement districts, how they intend to use any support that comes in through that. Uh, we love the bids. The, all of the bids go out and try their best to keep their areas clean. And we try to support that effort in every way possible. Um, so we, we need to, those are, those are hanging moments that I can't really speak to because it's still being formed. For us, the immediate term benefit is 65 basket trucks a week. Uh, from on an overtime program that doesn't impact our heads. That's good to know. If you can please get us, uh, get me the, the locations of where they are or what the routes look like. Um, I want to be able to communicate that to individual council members, um, uh, especially the ones that are extremely concerned. And I'm glad to hear that they're going to be focused mostly on communities that were most affected by COVID, um, which which really does really does help. Um, I want to uh, pause on the questions again and just uh, allow for. Um, the testimony, the public testimony to begin um, at this moment. Um, so thank you again, Commissioner, for answering all of our questions. Um, and should a council member join hereafter, we might give them an opportunity to ask questions um, as well. Thank you. We will now turn to public testimony. I'd like to remind everyone that unlike our typical council hearings, we will be calling on individuals one by one to testify. Council members who have questions for particular panelists should use the raise hand function in Zoom, and I will call on you after three panelists have completed their testimony. For panelists, once your name is called, a member of our staff will unmute you and the Sergeant at Arms will give you the go ahead to begin upon setting the timer. You will have three minutes to deliver your testimony. Please wait for the Sergeant to announce that you may begin before delivering your testimony. I would now like to welcome Kathy Nazari to testify followed by Eric Goldstein. Time starts now. Good afternoon, Chair Renoso, Nicole, and members of the Sanitation Committee. I'm Kathy Nazari of the Manhattan Solid Waste Advisory Board, or SWAG. We want to first thank New York City's strongest our sanitation workers who have kept us safe as we hunkered down in our homes these past six months. The men and women of the Department of Sanitation also lead the city's massive and complicated hunger relief efforts that provided food assistance to nearly one and a half million city residents during the pandemic. Their valiant work ensured that our health and safety were protected. Next, we want to thank the mayor's office for reallocating funds to supplement sanitation's efforts to keep streets and parks clean. And we also wish to thank council members for allowing us this opportunity to present testimony today. SWAB strongly believes that any further reductions in sanitation's budget without cooperation from its citizens and support from other city agencies will compromise the health and safety of all New Yorkers. The recent increase in local rat populations since the compost program was cut is evidence of that. We are grateful that essential food scrap drop-off sites have been restored and are hopeful that proper outreach and education will help ameliorate this issue. We ask that council members in the mayor's office maintain Disney's budget and services for the foreseeable future to allow time for the review and improvement of their services to efficiently and effectively protect the health and safety of its residents while meeting the city's zero waste and climate goals. In addition, the city should continue evaluating long-term solutions that include policy changes that will shift the city's waste burden back to producers and consumers through adopting policies like extended producer responsibility and savings and throw, while near-term solutions to bridge service gaps may include service swaps. For example, substituting a waste collection service for a recycling collection. We understand the present budget crisis is like no other faced by New York City and departments citywide have been subject to dramatic cost savings stopgap measures. CSNY's budget was reduced by $106 million this fiscal year, resulting in the suspension of its landmark organic collection program, reduced street 
cleaning and litter basket services and suspension and reduction of other important waste reduction solutions. We are still reeling from the loss of these crucial services that help the city progress towards its zero waste goals with potentially more cuts to come. While we understand the necessity of these cuts, any further reduction in business budget will affect essential services that protect the health and safety of New Yorkers. As the city considers its options, Rob will be happy to assist council members in the mayor's office as they work on strategies to achieve these critical goals. And just on a personal note, um, time I expired. Happily, I happily have uh, participated in community sweep up to do my part and will continue to do so. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Kathy. We appreciate your testimony and your effort and everything all the swabs are doing um, to assist the uh, Department of Sanitation. So thank you again for your testimony. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Kathy. Next, we'll hear from Eric Goldstein, followed by Sabrina Rezzi, followed by Deborah Rivas. Eric? T time starts now. Eric, you're, you're muted. You have to accept the unmute. Sorry, Eric Goldstein, Natural Resources Defense Council. Good afternoon, Chairman Reynoso, members of the committee, and welcome to Commissioner Grayson. We wish you and your staff the best in all of your efforts. I'm gonna summarize my written testimony. New York's streets and sidewalks are a key part of our environment. For city dwellers, our streetscapes are what we mean when we say we're going out. For most of us, they are the main place that provides our daily interaction with fresh air and open space. When these streets are overrun with litter, waste, dog poop, and other trash, we feel less joy walking down the street. And persistent litter on our streets lowers property values and neighborhood pride. Unfortunately, in recent months, the cleanliness of our streets and sidewalks have declined sharply in recent uh, in many areas, and we detail some of the facts about that in our testimony. Keeping the streets clean ought to be considered an essential city service. This task should not be viewed as a secondary consideration. The same is true, by the way, for organics collection and composting. Sending food scraps and yard waste to landfills or incinerators generates additional air pollution and global warming emissions. In the short term, we urge City Hall to reallocate funds, perhaps from the snow removal budget uh, and other sources to litter basket collection. But the budget challenges that City Hall is facing are real and we need more creative strategies to help fund these essential services over the long term. One way of accomplishing this is by reforming sanitation collection schedules so as to substitute one trash collection with a collection for organics and or recyclables. This would provide a similar level of service at reduced cost. The savings and funds, which could amount to tens of millions of dollars a year, could be reallocated for more frequent street cleaning and to establish citywide universal curbside organics collection. This strategy of reforming collection schedules is exactly the approach being followed in cities around the nation. For example, in Seattle and Denver, they've adjusted their waste collection schedule so that they now provide once weekly trash collection, once weekly collection of organics and food scraps and yard waste, and every other week recycling collection. In New York City, where our residential trash collections are more frequent, adjustments could be made accordingly with different schedules for different neighborhoods depending upon the waste loads. The total number of collections could stay the same, but the collections in different categories of waste on different days would create more efficient and more sustainable waste practices in the nation's largest city. So in conclusion, in addition to reallocating funds to address the short-term needs for restoration of litter basket collections, we urge the council to help jumpstart the process of reforming DSNY's trash collection schedule as a mechanism for generating additional funds for both street cleaning and curbside organics collection. As a first step, we recommend that the council advance legislation directing DSNY in cooperation, with its unions, in cooperation with its unions and the mayor's office of sustainability 
to complete a comprehensive study of what other cities have done in terms of route adjustments to save funds and to outline possible options in this area for the department and the council to consider down the line. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Eric. Um, and I, I just want to say I'm a, I'm a big fan of changing uh, the schedule uh, or how frequent we pick up, let's say, general refuse, for example. Um, limiting uh, the pickup of general refuse, let's say, to once a week would uh, incentivize or, or motivate folks to do better with recycling, knowing that that would be picked up more frequently. If we do that two or three times a week, everyone would make sure that all the recycling is out and just to not have all the, the, the general refuse um, uh, out uh, or in their homes. So we, we've been advocating for this for quite some time. And you are right. If we do some modification, there can be some cost savings while also uh, achieving many of our goals that we have when it comes to recycling. So it's something that I'm definitely going to be looking into, Eric, and I appreciate your testimony very much. Thank you. Any council members have any questions for the previous two panelists? Can you please use the Zoom hand raise function now? Seeing no hands raised, um, we'll move on and uh, hear from Sabrina Rezzi next, um, followed by Deborah Rebus. Time starts now. Good afternoon. I'm Sabrina Rezzi, the Director of Communi Communications and Legislation for Assemblymember Rodney Spichat. Assemblymember Bichat represents the 42nd Assembly District, which includes Flatbush, Midwood, and Ditmas Park. I just want to say thank you to Chair Reynoso and the members of the committee for holding this meeting. And Commissioner Grayson, it's a pleasure to meet you too, and we look forward to a continued relationship. Uh, I just want to speak a bit about what we've heard from our constituents uh, on the trash pickup. Uh, and that is that our district has experienced an increase in overflowing trash bins, litter, and agricultural overgrowth. Um, we received the largest number of complaints over the summer, uh, and they were centered on the area surrounding Brooklyn College. Um, constituents have also noted that there is a significant lack of trash bins in areas where there is high pedestrian traffic, and that you know the trash bins that are there are older and not the rat-proof uh, trash cans. Uh, one constituent group noted that two days after a community trash pickup, litter was back because there are no bins. Um, and, you know, I actually unfortunately experienced this personally over the summer. I was driving um, and ran over a nail that was hidden in, you know, some of the street garbage that has been blowing around uh, on our local streets. Uh, so, you know, I'm glad to see that the trash pickups are being restored by the mayor. Um, with the increase of 65 trucks. And I would like to thank the mayor's office for restoring those services. Uh, trash, as we know, breeds rodents and germs and our residents deserve a clean and healthy environment. And our current public health crisis means that we need to do more than ever before to uh, clean up the streets, sidewalks uh, and parks. Um, so thank you, Commissioner, Chair Reynoso and members of the committee. Uh, and thank you to Kathy Nazari and Swab for all your efforts to clean up our neighborhoods. Um, we're grateful for all of your work to improve the situation. Thanks. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, I want to make sure that we can get back to, to you and uh, the assembly member on whether or not the 65 new trucks or the expanded trucks um, are running through your district and that um, I believe uh, Senator Member Bishat's district was one of the hardest hit districts during COVID. Um, so I would assume that they're the ones that would receive the, the services. Um, but again, I don't have that information readily available to me, but when they get it to me, I'll get it to you. And hopefully, um, you know, we can see some, uh, an impact, a positive impact on your district. Thank you. Next, yeah, I appreciate we'll, it. Thanks. Next, we'll hear from Deborah Rivas. Time starts now. Hi, I'm Deborah Rivas. I'm part of a grassroots uh, community cleanup group called the Bushwick Initiative. Um, I want to thank uh, our city council member, Antonio Reynoso, who's been very great at supporting our group. 
And I also want to thank uh, DSNY. They've been really great. We actually hold regular meetings with the DSNY rep, and they've been completely supportive of, you know, our street cleaning crusades. Um, since the budget cutbacks, we have experienced a significant amount of uh, trash in the streets, and it's been a challenge for us to maintain the cleaning, cleanliness of the community because not only is there a lot of trash in the streets, there's trash in the park. And like what was said mentioned earlier, you know, we'll have a community cleanup and then about an hour later, the trash will be back on the street. Um, so I do have some recommendations um, regarding how that could be mitigated. I feel like we should, the city should focus on marketing and implementing a campaign that, uh, a litter-free campaign, I think that will help. I feel like the city can also, I don't know what the budget, well, now we're seeing the budget, but I think some money should be allocated towards um, maybe a text message system that reminds building and commercial um, owners that of the garbage schedule and the recycling schedule. I don't, I think part of the issue is that a lot of garbage is being put out on days where it's not a pickup day. And then what happens is that a lot of the homeless people dig through the bags and then they, the bags get scattered, the garbage gets scattered all over the street. Another recommendation can be maybe, you know, instead of having the black bags, clear bags put out. Cause I think that that'll help reinforce the recycling. Um, those are my suggestions. Um, as far as uh, restaurants, I think part of the reason why we see an abundance of garbage is because we did have outdoor dining and a lot of restaurants were using single use dinnerware and plastic, which created a larger abundance of garbage. And that's what you would see um, on top of the litter baskets. It was like overflows of like plastic spoons and plastic containers. I know that September 31st, we're gonna be um, allowing people to go inside, but I also feel like there should be some kind of messaging to those restaurant owners that, you know, they don't have to use uh, single use dinnerware anymore. There's nothing statistically that, there's nothing that shows that COVID is translated through uh, your regular plates and spoons. Um, I'm sorry, bear with me because I'm outside and I'm in my car because I'm actually working. Um, any suggestions to improve the city cleaning operations and fiscal challenges? I'm just reading through questions. Yeah, I do think that the main thing that we should focus on is just creating an awareness. I think that um, a lot of the little problem is people. And um, I think that if we don't emphasize the importance of recycling and keeping things clean, people will continue to just throw time expired on the street. That's it for me. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. And I just want to highlight the work that Deborah is doing in the community is, is really special. Um, it, it's about changing culture. Um, and making sure people understand that litter, littering is a problem. Um, and it seems like uh, since the Busher Cleanup Initiative, we've done a mural. Uh, they've been out there doing the work that the city should be doing um, uh, regularly. Uh, we've seen an increase in foot traffic in and around Bushwick. We've also seen the outdoor dining has made it so that uh, you know, trash is now put to the left or right of, of structures and um, are, they're compounded in the middle of the block. Uh, but the work that the, the Kena Bushwick Initiative has done is second to none. Um, and uh, they're really changing minds and, and culture, which I think is what's the most important thing here. If everyone were just to throw their trash away in their home, keep it in their pocket and not throw it out on the street, it would make a huge difference. Uh, but we're not there yet. Um, and I'm grateful for the work that uh, Ms. Deborah Rivas is doing in our community. So thank you, Deborah, for that. I really appreciate it. If any council members have questions for the last two panelists, you can use the Zoom hand raise function now. Um, and if not, there are no more panelists. So Chair, you can wrap up the hearing. Yeah, so I, I do, I, I wanna say again, I wanna emphasize, and it seems like it's uh, a consensus. We're extremely grateful for the work that DSNY is doing. We care deeply about uh, the the men and women of the department. <clears throat> of the department, uh, we know that we're asking them to do the same or do more with less. Um, so we recognize the changes that, uh, that that we're gonna see a change in how our trash is picked up. Um, but it doesn't mean that we can walk away from the problem. We need to address it. And I'm grateful that the mayor was able to find funding through overtime or whatever it is uh, to be able to get 65 more trucks in 
Um, I'm hoping that we could have a conversation maybe in a couple of months to see what what impact that has had on these communities and whether or not we'll start seeing something different. But I do want to encourage New York City to do better as well. Um, if we are all contrib if we are all contributing one way or another, um, and if we're able to uh, not litter, uh, it would make a huge impact and a huge difference. Um, Thank you again to uh, all the members of DSNY that are here speaking today, to all my council members um, for your questions. And I'm looking forward to the, a lot of follow-up so that we can see where exactly these, uh, these trucks are going to go and the impacts they're going to have. Um, so again, thank you so much, Commissioner, to the Chief, uh, to Assistant Commissioner. I really appreciate your time. And I think at this point, uh, we're done with the hearing. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Peace and love.